the Lax Factor Podcast. What is up, College of Cross fans? You're watching another episode of the Lax Factor Podcast. I'm your host, Ted Hoost, and today we're going to do a new format for Sunday's show. We're going to actually review the Hopkins and Virginia game from Saturday in depth. We're going to draw all over the screen. We're going to have a great old time talking about what made this game excellent, and I'm going to shut up and get on with it. All right, so the setup for this goal... Hopkins is playing some kind of weird, almost like a hybrid zone where it's like they're kind of in a man, they're kind of in a zone. We're going to see Cormier start to bully his guy up this left side, and he's going to get to the middle of the field here. He's going to hit Schellenberger. Schellenberger's going to score. He's going to make it 3-1 to one here. I want to rewind this, though, and I want you to see what I see and where this kind of play went wrong. So here's where it goes wrong. Cormier gets us right here. So at some point, he re realizes maybe that they're in his zone. Maybe he's just ready to get rid of the ball. But what we end up seeing happen here, this defender right here is too far away from Schellenberger. He was originally marking Schellenberger. Schellenberger faded off this backside here. As Cormier was coming up into this space, this defender does not fade with Schellenberger. So Cormier is going to hit Schellenberger here. And then from there, this defender would have been the help. So this defender should have immediately the way they were playing this defensive set where they're doubling automatically and then they're rotating, which you, it happened the sequence just before this as well. This guy should have gone immediately to Schellenberger and someone should have come across the crease to help with his guy. And then probably this guy should have been the guy to come down and help down here. That doesn't happen. We end up with three defenders on this side of the field all screwed up covering just two guys. And we have just three Hopkins defenders trying to mark four Virginia guys here, which it's just not going to work. So we'll watch it play out. We'll see it from one of the, from the back angle, the, how, how the defender, you could tell he kind of had a moment where it's like, oh man, should I go now? It, it really kind of played out on the backside here, uh, similar to how a four on three fast break would play out. So I will shut up and we will just, uh, enjoy the beauty of this goal initially. Nice look. And you can see Schellenberger looked a little bit surprised. Like, wait a minute, why am I so open out here again? So we will pause it right here. So right here is where you see this guy knows he's the guy who's supposed to go. One of these two is probably responsible for getting across. Now, I don't think this guy was thinking so heavily about this that he realizes if I go – my guy's alone back here, and it's going to be an easy goal. I think this was more of just a quick indecision. Things go down fast. This guy was literally so far out of position that I don't think he knew what was happening. And so if he had gone right away and broke down on Schellenberger, Schellenberger would have just hit him, and he would have dunked it. I don't see either of these two defenders getting anywhere close to him. But the, you know, I think this defender played this right. In this case here, you would rather – give up an outside shot, then give up a quick dunk. So kudos to him if that all went through his head. I'm not sure it was that complex, but we're going to just see it play out. Schellenberger, he goes eventually just too late. Easy goal. Setting this goal up, 3-1 Virginia. Now Matt Collison, we're just going to see him bully his man into the middle of the field and just rip one from deep. I think Noons probably was thinking what kind of sicko it would shoot in this situation. So he may have got caught sleeping a little bit. Because when we watch the replay on this one, you're just going to see it's very simple. I'm going to bully you into the middle of the field because I'm bigger and stronger than you. I've got a cannon. I'm going to let this rip. Noons kind of looked a little taken aback that he has an 85 to a 95 mile an hour um, rubber lacrosse ball beaming towards him. And you can see handcuffed. Just one of those double clutches where you go down a little bit. And then the ball just whizzes right by your ear hole on the stick side. Beautiful goal by Collison. That starts a four-goal Hopkins run that will culminate here in a goal by Jonathan Peshko that we'll take a look at next. Setup for this goal, pretty simple. Hopkins is now up 4-3. After a three-goal run, we're going to see Peshko get the ball up here on this wing up here on this corner. He's just going to come down. The pick doesn't even really do anything, and he just buries it from a severe angle, despite the fact he's got a defender on him, and he didn't look like he had much of a shot here. I'm going to rewind this for you, and we're going to take another look at it. I mean, it is a severe angle, and almost one would call this an ill-advised shot, but it goes in. It busts, busts a little bit of a twister on it here. And, and the pick doesn't even work out for him. You just see the pick didn't hit, but right about here, Peshko sees, hey, listen, I've, he's got the defender on that back hip of his, 
So he's just going to continue to come in here knowing the defender's on his back, his hands are completely free, and he's going to kind of bust that nice little twister out to put it past Erlen. There's not a, a replay on this one that I can show you, so this is all we got. Got the edge, had his hands free, busted, you know, half twister. Wasn't a great twister, but hey, scores a goal here. And at this point now, Hopkins is up 5-3 to three with 4.02 in the first, and uh, things are looking bad for people who like to bet on lacrosse. The over looks like it's probably getting hit in this one at this point for everyone who took the under, and uh, everyone's going to be really sad. All right, at this point, 5-3 to three Hopkins. Just over two minutes left in the first quarter. We're going to see Connor Schellenberger score the first of a four-goal Virginia run. Easy. Just good ball movement. You see the slide coming. Like as we said, Hopkins has been having a weird issue with trying to figure out how, where, who's going next. As, especially as it pertains to the backside. So when we see this replay, we're going to see, once again, a, a situation in which Virginia's properly splitting up the outside defenders. I'm going to pause this here. Right there. We are going to see, oh, let me go a little bit further. And it's it's blurry as crap right here. But what you see is the backside defender here who's supposed to be you know pretty much camping in this region so he's doing it properly the ball movement is just too quick and too crisp he's able to get that that second pass off much too quickly and he's just not going to be able to get out and break down on Schellenberger in time so excellent ball movement not as bad a defense in this scenario it's just very it was just excellent offense and the defense just couldn't react as quickly as they as they needed to to not give up this goal play Beautiful shot, though. Beautiful shot out of Schellenberger on that. Just paints the corner on that one. And that's going to, that's now it's a five to four Hopkins. So this was a key goal here, and it's going to spur a run. We'll, we'll come back here and we're going to check out the goal that makes it seven five Virginia, the fourth goal in the run. It's going to be scored by Griffin Schutz. Just a minute. All right, to set this one up, Shut scored moments ago on a feed from Schellenberger. Nice feed out top. Once again, Hopkins just not doing a good job covering the backside. And in this one, we're going to see Shut score unassisted. Uh, right now it's 6-5 Virginia, about 13 minutes left in the second quarter. And Schutz is going to make it 7-5 Virginia right here. Just gets to the middle of the field with hands free. Can't let that happen. Once again, Hopkins defense just not... Not in a straight man-to-man, -man, and whatever they're doing up to this point is not working for them as we see Schutz just get to the middle of the field with his hands free. No one there to stop him once he got past that first defender and had that, that defender on his backside. We'll take a quick look at the replay. Right there. What was that? Two defenders came streaking out at him. Both of them take the wrong angle. Both of them take the the low side. They give him the high side. I mean, that is just terrible defense. Up to this point, it does not, even though um, Hopkins, you know, is going to pull it out and, and win this game here, like at this point, just defensively, Hopkins did not look good. And as, as I was watching this game in real time, I was just waiting for Virginia to pull away and, and eventually win. But yeah, you can't have that happen. Both defenders just come out like gangbusters, both take the same side. This isn't a double team. This is a jailbreak. Terrible angle there that uh, six, uh, 46 took, and he just gets to the middle of the field with hands free. There's nothing that TD Erlen can do about that. And at this point, it is now 7-5 to five Virginia, uh, just a minute, or no, yeah, a little over, or just under two minutes into the uh, the second quarter. Okay, set up for this here. A lot of good back and forth here, but at this point in the game, Virginia has a 9-8 lead with 339 left in the half. They're about to go man up here. It is going to be a very quick man up opportunity. We're going to see the ball get reversed here. And the, the draw and dump and the slide just way too late out of Hopkins here. And now Virginia is up 10-8. to eight. Now, I, I want to run that back, and I want to look at this again. It, it should never be this simple. You know, you should never have a scenario where the the man up play is this simple. And this is just showing Hopkins slide package is just God awful at this point. We're going to stop right here. Right there. Now we can see everybody on the screen here. Okay, look at this. This is just terrible because number six, he's going to, I believe, by the end of this, be the one that's wrong. We have a guy, boom. That's how it works when you're on that four-man rotation, you know, the four-man running the wheel with the guy in the crease. 
And as he moves the ball up here to Schellenberger, this guy obviously is going to be uh, uh, take Schellenberger. And here we have number 44's responsibility out here as the ball moves around. So when we have Millen back off of this backside here, there's supposed to be a defender hustling to, to already be there. I mean, this is once again, just five on four principles. You, you do this in practice every day uh, from high school on into college. And we're just going to see an absolute breakdown of that fundamental. We're going to see ball goes one guy, boom, we're good. Ball goes to the next guy. But like I said, this guy, he he was in a good enough space to cause this to move. But what we see here is shut sees this guy is here. And this is what you would teach your guys offensively. Anytime you get the ball here and you're adjacent man and you see that slide is that far away, you don't even think about it. You huff that ball right down there to him. And uh, that is, that's what happens. And we get an easy goal in this situation. So let's take a look. And, it, and like I said, it's going to make it 10 to eight Virginia with 329 left in the half. Now we're going to watch the highlights. Millen was quiet. I believe we'll look at the stats here when I'm done, but I believe Millen, that may have been the only goal that Millen put up on the day. Okay, set up for this next goal. Uh, Hopkins, it was it went it was ten eight going into the half. Hopkins scores uh, to get back to within a goal, and this game tying goal that we're about to see here out of Chauvet, terribly ill advised, terribly ill advised shot. You would generally say out of uh, Chauvet here, Hunter Chauvet. Peshko scored the goal with ten minutes left in the third to get back to within ten nine. Chauvet just decides, you know, let me just get Grimes a really easy assist and I'm just going to let this rip from deep. This is Seth Curry deep. Good placement. Once again, I think it's I think we got a, a situation in which Nunes is like, "Nah, man, he's not going to take that shot. Look how high up in the air and just not properly ready Nunes was there." And it's just like, "What kind of sicko is going to take a shot from out there?" Well, Hopkins, they have some sickos on offense that are willing to take shots from out there. And at this point it's tied up, 10 up with uh, you know about nine high nines left in the third quarter. A hell of a game here going on now. Okay, set this one up. Uh, Virginia ends up answering back. They score two goals. They're up 12 to 10 at this stage in the game, and they end up get a sl getting a slashing penalty, and we're seeing a man-up look out of Johns Hopkins down by two late in the third quarter here at this point. And this time it's going to be Virginia's uh, chance to play poor man-down defense right there. And and this is this is why, like I keep saying over and over and over again, that I am a big Matt Collison fan because you saw him earlier bully a dude down out top and score a goal from deep uh, on a, just a laser, and in this one he's just camping on the crease in as part of the man up play. And you know the kid's just got great hands. He's got bully hands, bully body, but uh, you know in and around the crease he can catch quick and unleash one un underhand and, and beat Noons here. An excellent goal, lefty. Beats him low. And this starts a four-goal Hopkins run. So Hopkins was down 12-10 when this goal was scored. It's now 12-11. Hopkins is going to go on to score the game's next three goals, and it is going to be Collison starting this run. And when we take a look at this next goal, it's going to be Collison finishing this run and giving Hopkins a solid and commanding lead that they would not relinquish. Okay, so the setup here now is uh, Collison scored the first goal in this run. Peshko and Garrett Degnan both scored goals not too distanced, and that ended up giving Hopkins a one-goal lead. And at this point, we're going to see Matt Collison get a look here, and he's going to give Hopkins a two-goal lead. Once again, gets his hands free and shoots kind of on the run from the middle. Just a laser past Nunes. And, and you could make the argument that Nunes had a down day, and I would have said that if I just looked at the box score. But when we're looking at some of the shots that, that Hopkins are taking, yeah, they're they're from deep, but they're getting some juice on them, and they're generally well-placed in the goals that we're looking at here. Look at that nice pick. It catches Nunes on stick side, stick side high. So you might make the argument Nunes wants that back, but what are you going to do when you've got a big dude moving from – Left to right in your field of view, he's got a cannon. You're going to get a little handcuffed. And at this point, it is now 14 to 12. 
Hopkins, in their minds, the good guys. And while it's going to get interesting and Virginia is going to continue to get back to within a goal, Hopkins will extend that lead to two again. And we're going to watch Matt Collison's, uh, let's say, the backbreaker goal uh, with 125 left in the fourth quarter. We're going to take a look at that next. And set up for this one, here comes the dagger. Virginia is back to within a goal. It's 15-14 with under a minute, uh, um, under a minute and a half here to play about right now. And this is, once again, the, the development of, um, of Collison, as even just as a Dodger. And like you, say, like, like you saw there, nothing insane, nothing special. Just uses his body to get up. You could make the argument it wasn't quite the 5-5. Five and five. It was maybe close to the 8-8, eight to eight and eight. And, uh, but just too big, too strong, despite the fact his defender isn't even in all that bad a position, he's able to get this shot off, and this ends up being the dagger in this game. We're going to see it right here. Not bad position at all. Maybe a screen at play a little bit here. Uh, I'm going to pause it where I think we might see it just kind of at the release here. But not bad defense. And so what you'll see with the line of this shot here, it's not bad defense here, you know, especially he's eight yards away from the cage. But as this shot comes in here, this defender does fade. So Collison's moving this way a little bit. The defender fades in a little bit. So we may see, you know, from Noon's perspective, he may have seen that ball kind of fly off this guy's shoulder uh, is what I'm assuming. But just Matt Collison is such a good midfielder. Once again, handcuffs Noon's, new, uh, you know, off stick, hip, kind of knee region, you know, it's pipes, you know, near pipe. That's not a great look, and you'd like Noons to get a better step on that, but that's it. 16-14, Hopkins ends up winning this ball game, and uh, from here, let us get out of that, and we're going to pop the stats up uh, so we can see what everybody did overall. When we look at the, the stats in total, Pretty evenly matched overall. There's a couple of places where Hopkins ended up getting an edge here. So we see uh, shots battle pretty dang close. Hopkins outshot in terms of shots on goal by Virginia ever so slightly, but it was TD Earl, or not TD Erlin. Chase Erlin had the better day in cage. He ends up with 16 saves to 11 saves out of Noons. You can see Noon struggled over that fourth quarter. As Hopkins stormed back, took the lead, and then didn't relinquish it. Turnovers, both teams kind of played fast and loose. It, it was sloppy at times, but, you know, 15, 16 turnovers, pretty tight there. Clears, very similar as well, very tight, nothing uh, glaring there. Now, when you start to look at the ground ball battle, I think that the edge in the ground ball battle is partly due to the fact that Hopkins does win out in the faceoffs 20 to 14 over Virginia. So they tilt the possession battle a little bit in their favor overall in the game, and they win. We also see Hopkins as they have done. Four penalties out of Hopkins, and Virginia goes three of four on those opportunities. Virginia played a much cleaner defensive game, but Hopkins is one of one on their man-up opportunities. So the, the big glaring thing here is Hopkins kept Virginia in it. You could almost make the argument once again early by giving up two penalties in the second quarter and then one in each of these in, in, in both of the penalties that Hopkins gave up in the second half third and fourth quarters respectively Virginia scored on so that ends up hurting Hopkins but the 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 face-off battle was was huge in this and as we dive into the stats and we see what Virginia scores did Schellenberger four and two on the day off nine shots a very efficient day did have three turnovers but six points off nine shots you're going to take that all day Griffin shuts three and one Peyton Cormier two and two not too bad but you know Peyton Cormier and McMillan and these guys are a little bit quieter and as we come up and see what the Hopkins dogs did Matt Collison the sophomore mid four and one on the day off eight shots three turnovers but once again five points eight shots you're going to take that or four goals off eight shots. Peshko, excellent day, four and one. Angelus was much more limited, uh, one and two on the day, just two shots overall, but once again, efficient when he does get the looks. He's burying them, but uh, the big day out of Collison and Peshko was huge. Degnan with a hat trick, that was also big. And then, as I said, the faceoff crew for Hopkins. Tyler Dunn goes 10 of 18 at the dot. Logan Callahan goes 10 of 16 at the dot. Those two combined tilted the possessions in favor of Hopkins, and that ended up being huge as well. And then we come down to the goal battle 16 saves for chase erlin the graduate goalie from cornell uh, against just 14 goals against so he finishes higher than 50 percent and matthew noons struggled but as i said if i just looked at this box score i would have been like hey noons, noons loses the goalie battle and uh, they lose the game and yes that is true but i would posit that hopkins had a, a good shooting day even the ill-advised shots that they took you could see situationally that it wasn't all on noons 
and uh, there was a lot of well-placed shots, a lot of surprise shots, and and Noons will learn from it in terms of the film as well, I think, overall. So once again, as we see a bunch of things happen this weekend where we see Duke lose, we see uh, Carolina lose, C- uh, Cuse lost, Notre Dame lost, all the top teams uh, have lost. We've got Notre Dame, Maryland today. That's going to be a great game. Um, But as we look at all of this, one thing that we're learning, these teams that are all at the top right now are not all that far separated, not nearly as far separated as I thought they were. I thought the Virginia, the Duke, and the Notre Dames of the world, maybe even the Marylands of the world, were. I thought there was a larger gulf between them and the teams behind them. And by seeing all of these teams lose at this point, we we see that's not true, and it is anybody's fight at this point. And right now, the you know the who the, the teams that are going to contend for the Final Four. I don't know who it's going to be. I still think it's going to more than likely end up being a Virginia, a Duke, a Notre Dame, a Hopkins, a Maryland type party. But the teams like Syracuse and uh, um, Army and these teams that are kind of out, you know, traditionally been outside looking in, they're maybe not as far behind the top tier teams as we thought, which is just going to make the rest of the season that much more exciting. So that's it. New format. Let me know what you think. We're going to start doing this more and more on Sunday instead. And the podcast that reviews the week and all of the games, I'm, I'm going to decide probably I'll drop those on Tuesday. It'll just give me much more time to prepare and do a better job of it. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And Hoost is out. Factor. The Lapse Factor Podcast.